after thinking about it for quite some time, I have decided to wrap up my Psychiatry is a Fraud 2016 series for this video. Because of the cyber attacks that happened constantly, but especially in several videos in this series alone, I printed out my notes. Uh, rarely do I even refer to notes, but this is the final video that I found it appropriate. And so I have proven definitively that psychiatry is a fraud, that the CIA and the secret societies and the government have their hands in psychiatry, and certain philosophies are prevalent in psychiatry besides Buddhism, of course, and um, conformity, Satanism, criminality, you know, the, the same philosophies that criminals hold that are specific to criminality, um, LGBT-friendly philosophies, feminism, atheism, and racism. Okay, so first I'll, I'll talk about Donald Ewan Cameron and then I'll close it up with my final thoughts and my final thank yous. Donald Ewan Cameron, born 24th December 1901, died 8th September 1967. Known as D. Ewan Cameron or Ewan Cameron. He was a Scottish-born psych psychiatrist who served as president of the Canadian Psychiatric Association. The American in 1952 to 1943 and World Psychiatric Associations. The American Psychopathological Association and the Society of Biological Psychiatry during the 1950s. Now, why do you think this is important? Was this some random psychiatrist? No. This shows you that CIA manipulation is prevalent in psychiatry. It highly influenced psychiatry. The CIA who brought over the Nazi doctors, you know, they're the ones who gathered the intelligence, right? And helped come up with the ways that they're gonna bring them over. And some of them were smuggled over, right? So, you know, on record, the CIA has influenced psychiatry. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out when a military intelligence agency is influencing mental health that you shouldn't be surprised when magically it is conducive to control, you know, for people who are trying to control you, social control, and that it upholds the philosophies behind um, America, the government, and the administrations, especially the, the, the two major parties. Notwithstanding his high professional reputation, he has been criticized for his administration without informed consent of disproportionately intense electroshock therapy and experimental drugs, including LSD, which rendered some patients permanently comatose. Some of this work took place in the context of the MK Ultra Mind Control Program, Wikipedia. Now, let's look at his philosophy. He believed that mental illness was a social contagion which means it was socially contagious, okay? And especially when coupled with four groups of people, four personality types, the passive man, the insecure person, or the passive person rather, the possessive person, and the psychopath, psychopathic person, okay? And he talks about how it's bad for, you know, a passive person to follow in society, okay? to follow somebody who's mentally ill, an insecure person to be reassured or to follow someone who's mentally ill, such as you see with the um, control grid. You know, there are th some things that we all are against that these people would be against as well, but that does, doesn't mean they're, they're good people. And the possessive, you know, sort of like a control freak. You know, the, ironically, psychiatrists such as him you know, um, our possessive types, control freaks, and the psychopaths, you know. All these people are found really in the military. You have the passive people that are following orders. You have the insecure people who are following orders. You have the possessive, you know, uh, officers. You, know. you have the psychopaths, not only in among the high-ranking officers, but also in the rank and file. So, Psychiatry is often described as having gotten better 
pointing to you know how mental patients were uh, treated before and how they believe that they're possessed by demons and so on and so forth something by the way they have never disproven and something that I don't think any of us can truly know one way or another about so you know it's important to note that on record psychiatry not too long ago especially is in flaws you know biological psychiatry didn't go away and it came from Ernst Rudin Franz Kalman these things didn't go away electroshock therapy didn't go away experimental drugs did not go away several years ago when I was in the psych ward they you know wanted me to sign a consent form for experimental drugs I mean is it is there really that big of a gap between you know non-consensual experimentation and um, experimenting on a captive audience of people who are accused of being mentally ill quote unquote mentally ill not really some people who go in there are, are pretty much out of their mind and to have them sign a consent form for experimental medication is pretty much the same thing as they're doing so psychiatry hasn't really changed since uh, Donald Ewan Cameron was the president of the World Psychiatric Associations. Hasn't really. A Scottish person. And I wouldn't talk about Scottish right and Freemasonry and how Scottish people tend to <laughs> be attracted to that. You know, obviously they're not all Scottish, but you see what I'm saying? But I think that I'll end it here. I've thoroughly, thoroughly explored these ideas in my videos in the past. And in this series alone, there is no reason why any viewer um, should not come to my perspective, my point of view on psychiatry. So I am honored to have resisted the oppressors with uncontrolled opposition. Even some of them who were white nationalists. And I would give them shout outs, my viewers, um, and so on. But I don't really want to put them on the spot like that. And You know, I, I'm, I'm proud to stand with such a morally upright group of people who have the moral will, the forbearance, and the perseverance to consistently do the right thing. It is as if we are carrying our crosses together, Christian and non-Christian alike. While Roman soldiers harass us, spit on us, and mock us, we are marching to our inevitable fate one moment something that I forgot to carry with me but I want to include in this last video okay I want you all to know that when there's a time for war it is a time for war you should not live by the sword unless it is the only option. And of course you should if it is the sword of God. There are, you know, it comes with a price. I proudly die by the sword for what I believe. And I'm proud and honored to have resisted the New World Order with such resilient, radiant, resonant men. What I mean by resonant is they have a certain light that resonates inside of them. And together we have resisted these people. And I hope they understand what I mean when I say I'm God's representative on earth. I'm not saying that in a condescending way. I'm saying that so people truly understand. If you want to look up to someone, look up to someone such as myself. All cockiness aside. we were all if we all thought the way that I do the world would be a better place I wouldn't need to stop everything and address the worst problems that face us all I could invent disease you know invent cures you know, invent things that are healthy for the environment and for us all I could have done a lot of other things 
could have had a family, could have had true love. But God is love. God is my love. And so I'd also like to say to my family, even though we didn't see eye to eye on everything, especially not psychiatry for the most part, I'm sure some members of my family do see it my way, but they have decided not to come out in the open with it. And that's fine. But thank you for all you have done for me. And I don't want any of you to cry for me, my friends, my family, my fellow uncontrolled opposition. Weep for the innocent. Weep for the non-combatants who suffer. Weep for the other revolutionaries. But I would have it no other way. I wouldn't change it for the world when it comes to what I have done to resist them. I wouldn't change anything. I proudly accept my fate as a man should. And to the New World Order, whenever you are ready, come get me. You know that I've always been ready to die. I'm ready. I'm ready when you are. And until either I come for you or you come for me, I will keep walking with the Lord. Nothing will ever change that. My brothers, my sisters, my white, native, Asiatic, Asian, Semitic, Black, Hispanic, Islanders, all of my brothers and sisters. I did this all for you and God and one day you will understand that I was right. And one final word of gratitude, one final expression of appreciation. Thank you all for being uncontrolled opposition, for those of you who are. And those of you who aren't, I hope that you see the light. And those of you who do what you can, I would insist that you do what you must. In the name of the Most High, I hope that you all will be blessed. I hope you all will do the right thing. never submit to evil no matter how much it hurts to resist thank you all once again continue to fight the good fight and if today is my last day then farewell my beloved brothers and sisters